Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm doing another unscripted video where I just take a photo that I've done nothing to and have not been practicing with and I just dive in and try to see if I can figure out if I can do something with it. Um, this is really designed as a way to kind of show you my thought process and kind of what I'm going through as I try to edit a photo versus a scripted thing where I've planned it out and I'm trying to uh, you know, basically in those cases show something very specific. So here's a photo. This was taken in Vienna, Austria many years ago. And looking at this, the f apart from it being kind of crooked and dark and all that, the first thing I notice is that the verticals are off. So I'm going to go into Composition AI and I'm going to see if I can get this thing uh, uh, basically adjusted. So I clicked the automatic one. You can see what's happened there, which, which looks okay. I don't think it's perfect. I'm going to just basically pull that back a little bit. I need to experiment here. I'm not exactly sure, but um, yeah, I think I think more like that. I think that looks good, and now it looks straight as well, so I'm okay with that. I actually, you know what though? I'm gonna see, I tend to like the 16 by nine crop. It might cut off too much. Actually, you know what? That works just about perfectly. Yeah, that actually works great because the bottom is cutting out that drain, which is kind of in the middle of like a dead zone. Um, and the way the people are lined up, it works just fine. So I'm actually okay with that. I've now got a photo that I like a bit better. And the next thing I'm looking at is the sky. And I love blue hour in cities. It's my favorite thing, but sometimes you just want to replace the sky. So I'm going to try a sky replacement, see if I get anything out of it. And I'm not sure which one to use. I'm just going to try a few things and see what happens. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's That's gone in quite well. I, I love this sky enhancement tool. It's, uh, it's actually just fantastic. I'm going to try a few different ones. That's a little too boring. Uh, this will be too much of a night sky. I don't think you're really going to see that many stars over uh, a town in the middle of a you know, like a, a big city in uh, in Europe or anywhere for that matter. So I'm just gonna click through a few more until I find one that I really like. And actually, I think I'll use this one. And so what I'm gonna do now is shift the horizontal position. I'm gonna bring that a little bit further down. I'm gonna do something a bit more like that. And let me see about this vertical. I don't really need to do anything with that. I'm fine with that. Uh, relight strength, I'm gonna go ahead and give that just a little bit, but it's gotten really good to where you know, it was already a little bit warmer in the foreground because of kind of the building colors and all the lights and all that. So even before putting in this sky, it's got a bit of an orangey kind of look to it. And so when I added this sunset sky, I think it already kind of fit. So I don't feel like I needed a whole lot of scenery lighting. There are no reflections. I am going to defocus the sky a little bit simply because I like that. Also, uh, this was one exposure from a bracket set. This was like 2012. I was shooting brackets like all day, every day. Um, and so it's a little bit longer of exposure, as you can see with the ghosted people on the left. So I think a defocused sky, which looks um, looks a little bit more like a long exposure, I think that goes fine here. So I think I'm pretty good with that. So, so far, you know, we went from that to that. I think we're getting there. And so now that I've done that, I think the next thing I'll do is go to the light tool. And this is just kind of my typical editing. I just typically add a little bit of uh, contrast, maybe put on the highlights just a tad maybe lift the shadows a little bit, and then I'll go to Enhance AI, and I'm going to try a little Accent AI, see what that does for me. Okay, I kind of like that, but I'm going to go back to the Light tool now and take the temperature a little bit left because it's getting a little bit too intense. So I think something about like that. I'm going to try the Sky Enhancer just to see how that looks. Yeah, I think I like a little bit of that there. I think that's fine. Now, Structure. I tend to like to add structure to photos, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And of course, this is going to be just in the foreground. So I'm going to go ahead and get the masking brush and I'm going to click erase and I'm going to do this really fast, but I'm just going to erase it from the sky because I don't want structure in my sky on the sky replacement tool. I went in and actually created a smoother looking sky. So the last thing I want to do is um, add any structure to it. So let me do this masking real quick. Okay, so something like that I think looks good. Um, I wish there were some more intelligent masking tools like an edge wear brush. I just would love that. And now that I've done that, I think there's too much structure. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit because I don't want to overdo it. I just kind of wanted to bring those buildings to life a little bit. And let me turn this off and compare. So there it is before and there it is after. I might do a little bit more. So maybe about 30. Now that I've done that, one other tool that I really love in Luminar AI is Super Contrast. So I'm going to come experiment with that just to see if there's anything worth doing. 
I'm going to do uh, yeah a little bit on highlights maybe. Let's try the midtones. I kind of like that. And let's try shadows. That brightens those a little bit. This is what I always do with super contrast. I'll go move each of those three a little bit, and then I'll come back and experiment with the balance on each one to see how it looks. Going to the left, brightens out a little bit. I kind of like it brighter, even though um, I tried to darken it earlier. Let me see here. The midtones, that looks pretty okay. And then the balance on the shadows. Uh, I don't know, maybe something like that. Let me see. The thing I always do is after I make these adjustments in super contrast, I turn off the tool and look at it, turn it back on, see if I like the difference. So let's turn it off. There it is before the super contrast adjustments, and there it is after. So overall, a little bit brighter photo. I think I like it. You know, this is tough because I'm kind of winging it, and I can't sit here and play with it for 20 minutes to get it just right because nobody wants to watch a 20-minute video, let's face it. So I like that. I think that looks pretty good. I do want to go into color harmony, and what I want to do is go into color balance, and I feel like it's still a little bit too warm, so I am actually going to start with shadows. And I'm going to give it a little bit of blue, and I'm going to try in the midtones with a tiny bit of blue as well. Maybe something about like that. Let me see. Once again, let me turn this off before. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit warmer overall, and after, a little bit darker, a little bit bluer. I like that, but I think it's too blue, too saturated on the blue. So I think I'm going to come over here, take saturation down slightly and vibrance down. It pains me to do that. I love my colors, but I do want them to be realistic. And I'm going to go into the blue saturation specifically and pull that down a little bit as well. I don't want to overdo it. I love my colors, but I don't want to overdo it. And in fact, I think while I'm at it, I'm going to take the magenta and slightly down as well. And now let me compare this before and after. So there it is before, a little bit richer, a little bit more vibrant, and after, a little bit more muted, I think a little bit more realistic. And I'm definitely, you know, I'm going to say I'm going for realistic here, and, and I put in a new sky, but... Apart from the new sky, I'm going for realistic. So I think that color reduction and the saturation just killed the intent, didn't kill. It uh, reduced the intensity a little bit. It didn't kill it. I like the intensity, but I think it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to go with that. And then I think I'm going to try um, a mood tool uh, that is a LUT. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to try a couple of these. Um, I just like to experiment. Auckland is way off, Chicago, Dallas. Uh, Geneva, London. I'm just kind of scanning these here. One of the ones I really like is Seattle, but that's way too purple. Tokyo. You know what? I think I'm going to skip the LUT. I don't think I'm feeling it, but I do think I'm going to go with a little uh, mystical because it's mystical and it's just so good. So let's try mystical, which you'll probably notice creates a little bit of contrast, a little bit of shadow, which I think works here because it's, it's post-sunset. It's basically blue hour. There's still a little bit of light in the sky and a little bit of sunlight and cloud, even though I faked the sky. But, you know, regardless, you can see that there's shadow on the ground. I think that makes sense. And so I'm going to pull up the shadow a little bit so it doesn't get too shadowy. But I want a little bit of mystical that creates a little bit softer edge of day kind of feel. And it's clearly edge of day. So if I turn that um, off, there it is before mystical, and there it is after. I think I like that. Let me look at this before and after and do this sliding comparison. I mean, we've come a pretty long way if we're just kind of winging it. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. i actually thinking about something, and I don't really ever do this, but I'm going to try that, and that is the tint is really still pretty magenta overall, and I always, not always, but most times I go to the right with tint, but you can see where it's defaulting to. I'm going to actually try tint a little bit to the left because it still feels a bit heavy on the pink. Now, if I go too far, I'm going to get really into green, and, and I don't like that at all. But, you know, pulling this down a little bit and getting a little bit further away from magenta, I think is going to give me a little bit more realistic color look in the photo. And I just got to be careful not to go too far, and that's too far because those buildings are now getting green. So maybe something like this, like a negative 30-something, I mean, that's a pretty significant difference. Let me go back to where it was. So let me look. I'm at negative 32. If I reset that, yeah, it's definitely a lot more pinkish kind of purple at negative 4. So back at negative 32, I think I like that better. It's just a little bit more realistic, and I think the colors go together a little bit better. And I think the last thing I'm going to try is just a little bit of a vignette, and I like to go generally pretty round. So I'm going to go high on roundness and high on feathering. Uh, and maybe a little bit of inner light to pop the center of that photo. And that's overcoming a little bit of that edges of the day look, but you can tell that it's sunset. Let me see uh, if I go a little bit tighter on the vignette 
and a little bit less on the size. It's going to get obviously dark on the edges. That's what a vignette is, but that's okay. I don't want you spending too much time as a viewer looking at the edges. To me, it's more about the street and kind of following the line of buildings and, of course, looking at the sunset. So let me turn that off. There it is without a vignette, and there it is with a vignette. I like that, but now that I see that, I might want to pull the highlights down just a little bit more because it feels like that inner brightness that I'm doing in the vignette is making this uh, that center sky area a little bit too bright. So let me just see what this does as I'm just adjusting this. Yeah, I like that a little bit lower. So let me go back to vignette. This is what I do, my friends. This is really how I edit. I bounce around. I look at things. I try to adjust them. And sometimes when I adjust them, it screws up something else. I go play with that. And then I got to go back and adjust it. I bounce around a lot. I always talk about the delicate dance. This is the delicate dance in action where I'm trying to get all the things I want to get, but I'm trying to get them to look the way I want them to look without screwing up each other. So it's basically, how do I get all my friends at a party and make sure everybody gets along? I'm the party maestro. This is the party. All these filters are my friends. I'm trying to get them to be harmonious. So let me look at this again. There it is now. And I think really what it is, I've just got too much inner light. So as much as I like that, I'm going to pull that down a little bit. I think something like that. And that has just given me another idea, my friends, which is to go get a local mask, which is a basic one with a gradient. And I think I'll put the gradient in here and I'm going to make it pretty wide and I'm going to lower that a little bit. And I think all I'm going to do is lift that exposure a tiny bit because it does feel a little bit dark. So I don't want to go too bright, right, where you get something. Well, that would be unrealistic, but I don't want to even want to go that bright. I just want to go, you know, well, actually about like that actually looks pretty good. Something about like that. So let me turn this off. If you look at the foreground before, you know, it's quite a bit darker. And now I'm going to turn this back on and the foreground now just a little bit lighter. And I actually, I think that's too much. So I'm going to pull that down a little bit more. So I don't want to overdo it. It's just, you know, I don't know, maybe mid 20s. It's just something that I experiment with. And truthfully, as soon as I finish the video, I'll probably go change it again because that's kind of how I operate. But I think that's all I'm going to do in this video. And that is basically just take a, a, a live edit from really a photo I had not used, had not looked at, had not tried, and create something that I do like. That's a full workflow example. Unscripted, completely unplanned. There it is before, and there it is now in the sliding window. So composition AI and crop, of course, new sky, and then countless adjustments to basically get the photo looking the way I want it to look. That's my full edit. That's a full unscripted workflow. That's how I do it, my friends. I add stuff. I play around with it till it looks right. I add something else, and that usually screws up the thing I just did. So I go back and do that, and then I'm bouncing filter to filter to tool to tool, trying to get it right until I feel like I got it right. And you know what? I think I got it right. That's about what I would do to this photo. Hope it gives you some ideas. Just, it's fun. If nothing else, um, you know, I hope it gives you some ideas about how I approach editing in Luminar AI. So many tools, so many things you can do. This is just one example of many. And if you like these kind of unscripted videos where it's kind of like stream of consciousness, it's kind of like you're sitting here with me editing because the only thing I'm doing is taking out any delays. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm not planning anything. I'm not trying tools and then recording it. I'm just literally doing what I just did. I sat down, I edited start to finish, and I stumbled and I fixed and I screwed up and I refixed and I stumbled again and I refixed. That's how it works, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff. Take care of yourselves out there, my friends. I'll see you later and adios.